Hello, welcome back to the next in our series of video tutorials on introduction to the IDF to PH toolkit. My name is Ed May with Building Type and uh, glad you could be here. Um, in this video, what I'd like to do is finish off our discussion of cooling and introduce a couple of uh, topics around mechanical systems. Cooling will sort of lead us right into mechanical systems and we'll look at how we fill in the primary energy uh, worksheet in the PHPP. And at that point, we should pretty well have a working, completed PHPP with some valid results that we could then analyze and assess uh, to see if we're meeting the pass-fail certification goals. So if you've been following along, hopefully you have a, a little project very similar to the uh, the one that we'll be showing here, um, uh, you know, a simple, simple box model project of a, a small uh, a single zone honeybee model that's streaming out successfully to your Excel. Uh, uh, PHPP. So let's pick up right where we left off in the last video. We were discussing in the last video um, the um, passive cooling worksheet and how we can enter our summer ventilation uh, inputs, so how we can set the wind, uh, window ventilation for the daytime and window ventilation for the nighttime. And we, as we saw in the last video, uh, that, that did not satisfy our thermal comfort uh, goals for our pass files or for our project here. Uh, we were seeing something like a to, to, you know, 15 to 20 percent overheating um, according to the PHPP. So that's far, far too high. And um, so what we're going to want to do is implement some active cooling in our, our project here. And um, again, we'll do that for demonstration to show how we, how we build in those uh, air conditioning systems. And that'll lead us right into a discussion of the primary energy, which we'll also cover uh, in this video. So let's take a look at our PHPP and uh, sort of see where we're where we're at here. So I'm in the verification worksheet, uh, and as you can see here, we've got some good results. Uh, we're getting good results for things like our heating demand, our, our peak heating load. We're, we're, we've got our 13% uh, overheating frequency, um, and we do have some results here for primary energy, but we haven't filled in any any values there, so ignore those for now. Uh, what I'd like to focus on here, though, is the cooling and dehumidification. And notice that we're not getting any results here in cooling and dehumidification. Notice also we don't have any targets for cooling and dehumidification. And that's because uh, unless we say otherwise, the PHPP and the IDF to PH toolkit are going to default to a passive cooled building. So a, a building with no air conditioning system, no active cooling system of any sort. Uh, and we can tell that here on the verification sheet very easily by taking a look up here uh, and notice that mechanical cooling is set to off or no. <clears throat> so we're, we're, we're inputting a, a no here and that's leaving our mechanical cooling off. And what we want to do is set this to a yes or X. So we want to turn this on. So we'll do that in this uh, next bit. Uh, when we do that, we'll see we're going to have to build out some equipment. So as soon as I turn this on, let me go over to the cooling section of our PHPP down at the worksheets here. As soon as I turn that on, what I will need to do is enter some information here in the cooling units worksheet. So let me boot a, uh, load up the cooling units worksheet just to take a look at our inputs here. And notice that we've got some different inputs for supply air cooling, recirculation cooling, additional dehumidification or panel cooling as appropriate. So we, we need to fill in one or the other or one or more of these um, uh, with their requisite values over here. So as soon as we turn on mechanical cooling, we're going to have to fill in some information here in the um, cooling units worksheet for this to work properly. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me go back to our grasshopper model here. Let me expand this a little bit so we have a little bit more room to work here. And uh, let's remember where we were, uh, where we left off last time. We were um, adding some information here into the setup PHPP portion of our Grasshopper model. And last time, as we saw, we were adding some information here in the summer vent worksheet or the summer vent entry. So we have this summer ventilation entry. We added a couple numbers here to represent the daytime and nighttime summer ventilation. So that's useful. That's that's useful. Even if we implement uh, active cooling systems, the ventilation is still really beneficial, especially in shoulder season. So we'll leave that on. We'll leave that active. The only other thing that we need to do here in order to turn on mechanical cooling is go to our PHPP setup component, which is this guy right here. And we had been leaving this as all default values. So if I take a look at the verification output, 
notice we are getting a bunch of values. Uh, we're getting a, a default country location, um, a specific key capacity, a, uh, here's cooling is getting set to off, and the number of residential units is set to one. So that's our sort of default. Of course, we can override any of that information uh, by inputting some values here. So for instance, for cooling, I'd like to turn that on. So if I just enter an X here in mechanical cooling, notice that this changes to an X. And if I go back to my PHPP, to my verification worksheet, notice mechanical cooling has been changed to uh, have an X in it. And if I open this up a little bit, notice now we're actually getting some results here in our cooling and dehumidification. So until we turn cooling on, until we turn on mechanical cooling, we're not going to get any results for our cooling and dehumidification and peak cooling load. Uh, sorry, cooling and dehumidification energy demand or our peak cooling load. So, okay, so we're getting some results here now, but remember, uh, we do have to fill in some information on the cooling units. And we also got um, something of a warning here. So as soon as I plugged that in, uh, this turned orange and I got something of a warning. So let's see what this warning says. It says, it looks like you turned on active cooling in the PHPP setup component, but I didn't set up any cooling equipment in the heating and cooling equipment components. What is that referring to? Well, we haven't, we haven't looked at that component yet. Um, but what it's telling us is that we turned on cooling, but we haven't actually built our air conditioning system. We need to input some information here into this heating and cooling input. So we're going to have to input some heating and cooling system information. So we're going to use a brand new component. We're going to drop a new component onto the canvas here. So let me reorganize a little bit. Let me move this guy a little bit so that we can connect a little bit more easily uh, to him. There we go. And I'm going to go up to my building type rollout. Go to O2, IDF to pH, and I'm going to grab a whole new, um, a whole new component and drop it onto the canvas here. I'm going to grab this set systems component. So I'm going to grab the set systems component. This is going to allow us to set up the systems, the heating and cooling systems. So I'll grab this guy and drop that right onto the canvas. So let's zoom in and see what we have here on this particular uh, component. We have a couple of inputs here for our heating generation. We'll come back to those in a little bit when we look at the primary energy. We have some heating and domestic hot water fractions. Again, we'll come back to that when we come back to heating and cooling. And then down below, we have a whole bunch of inputs for different types of mechanical systems. Boilers, heat pumps, ground, um, coupled heat pumps, compact units, district heating. And then the one we want, or the one we're most interested here for, for this uh, purposes, for our purposes here, is going to be this recirculated air cooling component. The recirculated air cooling component, let's go back to our PHPP for a second, is what we're going to use to fill in all of our values here for recirculation cooling. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see that a little bit easier. Zoom in a little more. So here's our recirculation cooling. So we're going to turn this recirculation cooling on. This is, you know, recirculation cooling, a typical heat pump cooling system, air conditioning system. Um, we have a couple different options. So um, is it a variable speed, a variable air volume? Um, you know, uh, what is the total capacity? What's the, the volume flow rate, the sear? Um, these are all going to be inputs that we're going to be asked to input here uh, for when we turn this on. And so we're going to use a new component for that. So by default, if I take a look at what's made, what's built by this component by default, I set up some of my heating. So again, we'll come back to that when we talk PER in a few minutes. But notice down here, I don't get any values for any of these um, systems. So by default, I don't have any systems coming through. So I do need to add in a system here, and I need to input some values. So to do that, I'll come back up here to O2, IDF to PH, PP. And I'll grab a new, oh, excuse me, go to O1 model. And I'll go down to the section here um, for systems, and I'll grab a create cooling recirculation component. So I'll drop that recirculation component onto the canvas here. And if we take a look at the standard output for that component, notice here that we, um, by default, get a, a typical system or a sort of default system that has a certain um, size, a kilowatt size, certain volume flow rate, uh, and a certain setup for things like SEER. So if we want, we can leave this set to the defaults. All I need to do is take cooling recirculation, plug it into cooling recirculation. So I take this, and plug it in there, and as soon as I do that, we'll take a look at the output for my heating and cooling systems now. 
So I get the same heating system set up at the top here, but notice down below, I have a recirculation cooling element now operational, now, now built into this system. So when I pass this on, when I take the heating and cooling output and I pass it on to the heating and cooling input on my Excel writer component, Remember, this turns everything into Excel writable components. First of all, the warning goes away because now we've hooked up a cooling system. And when I go back to my PHPP and take a look at my PHPP, I now have all of those values written into my recirculation cooling here in the cooling units worksheet. Now, of course, I can go in and edit any of those values at any time. So if I don't like those values, I think they're wrong for some reason, or I don't think they're the right ones, I could come in here and I could say, you know, maybe it's only a 12 kW system. Um, and maybe it's working at maybe it's a you know working at a thousand cubic meters per hour instead of a hundred, right? I can come in and change those numbers, uh, you know, at, at any point. So I can set whatever values I like here um, uh, on my my um, cooling recirculation element that gets passed to this overall system builder, and then all of the systems flow into our Excel writer uh, over here. So that's our cooling system. Um, if we wanted to build out uh, the other elements, if you wanted to do supply air cooling or you wanted to do some of the others, you would just um, input them in the right place. So supply air cooling, additional dehumidification, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have a couple different ways to, to enter that type of information here. And at this point, if I go back to my verification worksheet, my verification worksheet is just about uh, complete now. I'm getting heating demand information cooling and dehumidification demand information. I've got my air tightness pressure test. And now I'm getting some good results here for my primary energy. So these are going to be valid results for my primary energy because, to go back to my grasshopper scene, I've now implemented or I've now hooked up a heating and cooling system component. And the heating and cooling system component, by default, is going to build both a uh, heating system, and because we passed in the cooling system, it's going to build our cooling system for. So let's finish up now by taking a look at the heating systems. So that's our cooling system. Cooling system is done at this point. And let's take a look at the heating system. So let's take a look at the output of this systems component again. And let's just see what it's setting up for us by default for heating system. So you see at the top here, we're setting up a default heating system, a very simple default heating system. The primary heat generator is going to be direct electric. So direct or electric or electric resistance heating. The secondary generator is non-existent. And 100% of the heating comes from the primary generator. And 100% of the domestic hot water comes from the primary generator. Now, what does all that mean? Well, let's go back to our PHPP and let's take a look at the PER or the PE worksheet, the primary energy worksheet. So I scroll all the way to the end, go to my PER worksheet, and I take a look here at the PER worksheet. And let me zoom in again a little bit here so we can see what we're seeing. Zoom in a little bit more. So at the top here of the PER worksheet, you can see what values are getting set. So our primary heat generator, so there's our direct electrics. What are our other options? Our other options are um, heat pumps, um, compact units, boilers, um, or uh, district heating, or some other uh, user determined. And then the way that this funny table works is it says, it's asking us, what is the proportion, what is the percentage of heating which comes from the primary heat generator? And what is the percentage of domestic hot water that comes from the primary generator? And if we enter any number other than 1, other than 100, the rest of that element is going to come from the secondary generator. Now that might sound a little confusing, but let's take a look at, at how that might work. So for instance, if I was to come in here and I was to say, let me see if I can get both of these on the screen at once. If I was to say that, um, that, uh, that the domestic hot water was entirely served by the secondary heat generator, I would put in a zero. So 0% zero of the domestic hot water is coming from the primary heat generation type. And in that case, notice I get a little warning here, I would be expected by the PHPP to add in a second element. So maybe I would say that the domestic hot water comes from a boiler. 
So I can set up in that fashion, I can set up um, a relationship between those two. And, and of course, I can put it in a different number. So I could say, you know, 50% of the hot water comes from direct electric, and 50% comes from a boiler. I don't know why it would be configured that way, but you know, you could, you could um, do the model that way. So, okay, fine. So for our purposes, let's set the domestic hot water to zero, I guess. And in that case, we could set it to a boiler. So my secondary heat generation, notice here, I could set that to a boiler. So I could say, um, I could say four, a heating boiler. So I could say four heating boiler. And I could pass that in for my secondary heat generation. And so that's getting set as a heating boiler. And of course, now I would have to enter some information for a boiler. So I would actually have to build out a boiler with all of its um, component elements there. So for now, what I'm actually going to do is just leave that blank. I'm going to turn those off and del delete those. And what this is saying now is that 100% of our energy for heating is coming from direct electric, so electric resistance, and 100% of our domestic hot water is coming from direct electric resistance heating. And so if we look down a little bit further in the PHPP here, we'll see here, here's our heating. 100% comes from electricity. And then over on the right, you can see these are our PER and PE factors. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see that a little easier. So whoops, our primary energy and our primary energy renewable factors. And so you can see here, direct electric has a primary energy factor of 1.5. So we take our total end energy consumption. 30 kilowatt hours per square meter per year, multiply it by 1.5, that gives us our, or excuse me, our 1.4, that gives us our 42, and that gets folded into our total PER for the building. So this is our total PER for the building, uh, 80, and again, if we go back to our, go back to our verification worksheet, there's 80, that's our total PER, uh, and if we were using PER instead of PE, um, we would see a, a, a target over here. So we now have a valid PHPP that's fully working. Um, everything is flowing through, and we're able to uh, set up all of our heating and cooling systems here in the setup uh, portion. So the setup portion here, let me sort of make ourselves a little bit more room the, um, uh, for all of our additional elements here. So we've got our heating and cooling elements down below. We've got our... Um, uh, our, our basic elements, our basic setup up above, uh, and, and everything here is flowing through into the Excel model. So there's plenty of other options here that we could take a look at. Maybe we'll take a look at those in future videos, you know, things like the setting the climate and internal heat gains and um, <clears throat> and other uh, domestic, other systems, etc. But the basic workflow here is going to be the same as, as what we've just shown in the, in these um, in these recent series of videos. So go back to our PHPP. We now have our completed PHPP. Everything is working. Everything is flowing through from the Rhino model. As I change anything in the Rhino model, it changes in the PHPP. Uh, of course, we're over our limits, um, but um, you know that would be then the next phase of work here would be to go in and actually see if we can get this to comply with the passive standards. Um, and again, uh, you can um, sort of build out a whole bunch of additional complexity, um, but the basic workflow is going to stay pretty much the same um, uh, as we go through here. Uh, it's just adding additional components, additional elements. So I think that will do it for this series of videos. I think we'll wrap that up here. Um, certainly we'll come back and um, we'll have some additional videos in the future around some of these more advanced topics. We'll take a look at some of these you know, more advanced setups, things like I don't think we've covered ground contact services and maybe we'll talk about climate. Uh, and uh, certainly in the future we'll take, talk, take a look at some things like the variance worksheet. Uh, maybe we'll do some multi-zone modeling and talk about how we manage multiple zones. Maybe we'll do some non-residential in the future. Um, a whole host of stuff that we might sort of uh, pursue as we go forward. But um, hopefully the basic workflow here makes sense. And hopefully this is all working for you at this point and you're getting a successful streaming PHPP from your Rhino model. So as I said, I think we'll, we'll leave that here. And thanks for, thanks for watching. And um, uh, please do reach out if you have any questions or, or thoughts about uh, about, about any of this. Happy to, happy to talk about the, the workflow here if, if anybody does have questions. So thanks again, and I'll, um, I'll see you all in future videos.